Thank you, everyone. I'm really excited to speak in this beautiful theater. Welcome to this talk. Today, I'm going to talk about a tectonic shift I see companies across the world navigating in how they use data to power critical business decisions. That rise is about, that change is about the rise of real time and how Kafka helps you navigate that trend. That shift is happening because the core of how businesses operate has changed. You know, decades ago, businesses were built out of stacks of paper and people. But now businesses are much more digital, which means that they're equally made out of data and software as they are with people that do all the hard bits. But this reality is very different. I've observed that as an industry, we are still learning and we are still in the process of learning what it takes to transition your business to being a fully digital one. As part of my job, I get to talk to people who have built these fully digital companies, lots of them back in Silicon Valley. And I also get to talk to people who are in the process of transitioning their business from one that was built out of paper and people to one that is fully digital. And I've observed that the early versions of this process, it mirrors what humans did. So you buy data systems, you replace your file cabinets as a storage mechanism, you write computer programs, and you automate what uh, humans did manually. But the question is, is that enough? And I'd argue, not really. Making this transition to being a fully digital business is much less about creating a better or faster version of what existed before, and it is much more about fundamentally rethinking a different solution that is catered to modern digital needs. That different solution is based on streams of information. Data on paper is inherently static, but that limitation is long gone. Data is and will be seen as continuously flowing streams of information, not as a static pile. I'd like to make a bold claim here that you can view all your data as event streams. What is an event? It is just something that happened that might be relevant to your business. Let's take an example of a business that we all might be familiar with, retail. Now, sales and shipments in retail, they're not a static thing, at least not for a successful retail business. They can happen all the time. So they are representative streams of events. And reacting to these streams of sales and shipments is at the heart of what a retail company does. This is by no means specific to retail. Event streams are relevant to every business. These are all the types of events you might find in any business. There are business events specific to the particular company. There are events in log files that tell you how your application is doing. There are events from sensors that convert information from physical world and into digital events. There are monitoring, even change logs from databases are streams of events that tell you how databases have changed. Now, you might think, you know, event streams are everywhere and they're useful and they form the core of a business, but how do you actually use them? At a high level, you can do two things with event streams. You build data pipelines, so streams of information are available everywhere. Your applications can be built using it. And then you react to those events, you process and transform them. That really forms your company's business logic. So how do companies actually do this? How have they been doing this all this while? In reality, this is kind of a giant mess. This is absolutely common across all the companies I talk to. There are these ad hoc data pipelines, point-to-point -point connections between every new type of source, every new type of destination. There's some data that flows in real time through messaging systems, other data that flows through custom ETL scripts in a batch fashion. But over time, this ad hoc way of building your data pipeline is really unmanageable. Replacing that and moving to event streams and building a central streaming platform that allows you to publish once and subscribe and consume many times is what cleans up this mess and leads you to a much better reality. The key insight I want to share is that you can think of data pipelines as event streams. So all those messy lines that you saw in the picture, you can think of each line as an event stream. And if you did that, then that allows you to work towards a much better reality of having a central streaming platform that can store your streams, they can be represented the same way. 
This is the basis for having everything in the company. Subscribe to a central platform and get access to information they need. This is true for a single app for messaging, or this is true for the whole company to be built around this platform. So event streams are everywhere and they form the core of a business, but how do you begin a transition to being a streaming first enterprise? The first step is to make a fundamental transition to event-centric thinking. Let me take an example to explain why I mean by event-centric thinking. Let's say you have this retail web app and you're publishing product view events into Hadoop for doing some sort of analytics. So you take your web app, you make it publish a stream of product view events into the streaming platform. On the other side, you load it into Hadoop. That's a simple streaming pipeline. That works, but you might be thinking, you know, what is the value that this streaming platform really adds at this point? But you will notice that over time you add a mobile app, you add external developer APIs, they publish the same product view events. But notice that the Hadoop part of your load doesn't have to change at all. All it does is it publishes, it subscribes from the central streaming platform and get access to data. So there is this inherent decoupling introduced by this pop sub model where things that publish data, things that consume data, they don't know about each other. and They're in, entirely isolated from changes on either side. Going one step further, as you add more things that consume the same data, they don't have to add point-to-point -point connections with everything that produces it. All they do is they subscribe to the central streaming platform and get access to data. Putting this event-centric thinking at a company-wide scale is essentially why we built Apache Kafka. We had a very particular vision of what a company would look like if you had reimagined its use of data around streams of information. So what is Kafka? It is a distributed streaming platform. It is a cross between a messaging system, a file system, and a database. What does that mean? It supports very high read and write throughput and hundreds of megabytes per second per server. It can store multiple terabytes per server, just like a file system. It persists data, it orders data, just like a database. And it has replication, fault tolerance, horizontal scalability, as you would expect any sound distributed system to do. Kafka was born seven years ago at LinkedIn, where we took the company from the giant mess into a much more manageable data architecture. LinkedIn forms the central nervous system. Kafka forms a central nervous system at LinkedIn, and it powers more than 1.4 trillion messages per day. This is not just true at LinkedIn. In the last couple of years, Kafka is adopted across thousands of companies worldwide and it forms a mission-critical part of a company's business. So event streams are useful. We built Kafka to put event-centric thinking at large scale. So how can you practically use Kafka to put streams into reality in your company? I mentioned that there are two uses of event streams, and Kafka is useful for both, for building streaming data pipelines and reacting to and processing streams of information. Let's take a look at the first one, which is streaming data pipelines. Kafka's Connect API was built to make it really easy to build these streaming data pipelines. In this picture, it might seem simple to just draw a line and have data flow between two external systems using Kafka. But there is a lot that needs to go underneath the covers correctly to be able to do this well. How do you shard your data across external systems? How do you maintain ordering? How do you carry a schema between two external systems as data flows through Kafka? These are all the details that Kafka Connect abstracts away from the user. And it offers two simple API to the user. There are source connectors that pull data from external systems into Kafka. And there are sync connectors that take data from Kafka and publish it into an external system. And that's about it. If you're a developer that wants to write a new connector to any system, all you do is you implement the source and the sync APIs, and you leave all the hard bits to the Kafka Connect framework. Now, if you're a user that just wants to use off-the-shelf connectors to build your streaming data pipelines, today that's very simple to do. There are more than 70 different open source connectors that you can download from the Confluent Connector Hub to build streaming data pipelines in a completely off-the-shelf manner 
without having to write any code with Kafka. So there are two uses. We just looked at streaming data pipelines, which are really the thing that gets the data flowing and is the foundation of what it takes to move to real time. Now let's take a look at reacting to and processing streams of information, which ideally should be step number two. In fact, there is a term for doing that which is quite popular these days, stream processing. It is oftentimes expressed as various functions like filters and, and aggregates and joins on top of infinite uh, continuous streams of information. So if Kafka's Connect API is for building pipelines, Kafka Streams API is for processing streams of information. And we built it with one guiding design principle, which is making stream processing really simple to use, allowing developers to develop their apps as essential stream processors. Now, it's worth mentioning that there are really two different visions for stream processing. There's making MapReduce go faster, and there is thinking of all your applications as event-driven microservices that do stream processing in place. You will notice that there are several stream processing systems out there. And they subscribe to roughly vision one, which is making real-time MapReduce. As a result of that, you will notice that they have elements of the MapReduce design. There is a central cluster where you run all your jobs. You write your stream processing code as a specific job. It is packaged, operated, monitored, deployed a certain way. In fact, we built one of the systems that did stream processing on Kafka called Apache Samza back at LinkedIn. And we tried to get LinkedIn developers to use it, and it was sufficiently hard. And the reason was that while this adoption pattern might work well for analytical workloads, convincing developers to take just the stream processing part of their code out of their applications and give it to us to run it as a job on our cluster was really hard. They simply did not want us to prescribe a certain way of packaging their code, a certain way of deploying it. And so we learned from those lessons, and we approached the problem a second time from the other side and we built Kafka Streams. At its heart, the guiding principle has been, let's build apps, not clusters. So you will notice that Kafka Streams is a simple but very powerful library. It is not a framework. You can embed it in your Java app and do stream processing. It offers a convenient DSL with state-of-the-art stream processing operators, filters, transforms, joins, and so on. It is a true event at a time stream processing engine, so it doesn't do micro-batching. It offers the option of local state, so as you compute all the aggregates, you can choose to store it right within your app and not depend on an external database. And it provides automatic scaling, so if you, all you do is you deploy more instances of your app and it scales the processing out without you having to do anything else. Now, let me take an example of an app that might show you how these two visions influence the architecture of your stream processing app. Let's say you're, doing, you're building a real-time dashboard app for security monitoring. What you want to do is highlight the geo regions that correspond to the most irregular user activity, whatever irregular might mean. So you might have streams of events that are flowing through Kafka, which are user activity events. And you might want to write a stream processing job that windows and aggregates data. It groups by the geo region, and it highlights the windows that cross a certain error threshold. So with vision one at the top, this is what your app might look like. You have a Kafka cluster, which is really the source of all the streams. You deploy a separate stream processing cluster. You write your code as a job, and you run it on that cluster. Now, as your job runs, it publishes, you know, it, it computes all these counts, and you need to store it somewhere so your app can read it. So then you deploy a separate external database. It might be Cassandra or MongoDB or, or anything else. And then finally, you have your dashboard app that reads all those counts and then might um, display it on the dashboard. Now, contrast that to vision two. You have the Kafka cluster. That part doesn't change. You still need your streams of information. And then you have your dashboard app. What that does is it embeds the Kafka Streams library. It computes the counts. 
it uses the local state stores to store those counts. And then those state stores are queryable in Kafka streams. So it just queries the counts locally and then publishes it on the dashboard. You might notice that this might seem simpler from vision one. And that is because that has been the guiding principle of Kafka Streams, which is to build applications, not clusters. You know, to summarize, Kafka's Connect and Streams API, it really encapsulates the entire scope of what it means to put streams into practice in your company using Kafka as the core. If you did that and if you adopted Kafka and uh, Kafka's Connect and Streams API, then you can move towards this vision and this reality of having a central streaming platform that forms the basis of all your real-time information and needs. I've observed from first-hand experience that this has a profound impact on what is now possible with all the data available in the company. All the data that, that previously went into your warehouse is now available for stream processing. Data from various apps can simply plug into a streaming platform and uh, compute the core business logic. Apps like anomaly detection, threat detection, monitoring, alerting can happen in real time as events come by versus once a day at midnight. And all of this is possible by significantly simplifying the footprint of your data architecture by having a single platform at the heart of your data center, a streaming platform. This is the vision that uh, inspired Kafka, and it is the mission of Confluent, which is to put a streaming platform in the heart of every company in the world. We've taken a lot of the tools that I mentioned and built an open source platform, Confluent Open Source. We'd love your feedback, so you can hit download and get in touch with us. Thank you very much.